Hey Google, play Dead by Daylight. Hi YouTube, in this video I'll show you how you can integrate the PlayStation 4 into Home Assistant. We will be creating a script in Home Assistant and then exposing that into the Google Home app. At the end of the video, I'll show you how you can put a PS4 controller in the Lovelace dashboard thanks to the Harmony Hub. If you enjoy this content, feel free to subscribe to support the channel. Let's get started. Open up Home Assistant and navigate to Configuration, Integration, and search for PlayStation. Now get your mobile phone and launch the PS4 second screen app. Refresh your devices and select Home Assistant. Now in Home Assistant, you can either select Auto Discovery or Manual IP Address. I selected Manual IP Address as my PS4 has a static IP address. Now you need to get the pin. You'll find the pin in PS4. So with your controller, go to Settings mobile app connection settings and select add device now enter the pin displayed on the screen into home assistant at this stage you need to select a region bear in mind that some of the regions are not included please reference my blog or the home assistant guide now that your playstation 4 has been added you can assign it to a room and you'll find in the developer tool an entity ID. In my case, it's media underscore player dot PlayStation underscore four. And now you can use certain services such as media underscore player and media underscore player turn on and turn off. Build the script that we want to expose to the Google app. Go to your file editor. I'm going to my scripts.yaml. First thing to do is give your script a name. In my example, I'm playing this game called Dead by Daylight. I've created an alias for it and I've set a sequence. I've got a series of things that will happen in order. The first thing that will happen, the PlayStation 4 will turn on and I'm using the simple media player turn on and you'll need to substitute this value here, the entity ID with your own. And then turning off the living room one and the reason for that is because the light bulb sits right uh, in front of the PlayStation and it sort of bothers me, so I like that to be off. And I'm turning on my lamp lights in the living room. I'm turning on the Harmony activity and I'm ensuring it's play PlayStation 4. This, I will need this just in case I want to use the dashboard that we'll set up later, but it's not compulsory. If you don't have an Harmony uh, PS4, this will work without it. I'm adding a delay of around 35 seconds to ensure that the PlayStation has time to boot before we send the commands. We're not sending the commands too early while PlayStation is still uh, booting up. Um, I'm also toggling another light to red to get, create a little bit of ambient light. And uh, at the end of the day, I am selecting the source, which is um, the actual uh, video game that I'm playing. And this you'll need to get this exactly the same and you need to copy paste this from a configuration file which we'll go have a look right now. Once you've finished, uh, save and then you can reload scripts as, the, as usual. So reloading scripts, no need to restart has. So let's have a look at that PlayStation 4 JSON file. So go to the config and you should see a, a file some, called something like this, PS4 Games. And if you click on it, you'll find a list of applications and games that you have run since you've integrated with Home Assistant. So the first time you'll need to run it um, manually, so you need to open up the game. And then this will then get picked up and a new record will be created in this file. And this is the exactly the name that you need to reference in your automations or whatever you're using. In our example, we're using um, scripts. And we can easily switch sources. For example, we can use Netflix, Plex, Twitch, or 
any any other game that you you wish once that is done if you want to trigger the script manually go to configuration scripts and there you have it so you have that play button if you play it uh, everything will start triggering and then you'll have your um, date on when it was last was triggered just triggered it right now and it's timestamps a date if you have any error message it will probably pop up here if not feel free to go into the logs in home assistant to try and find figure out if everything's working but i would advise is that you um, start small so start with something simple get that working and then in, you know iterate on your script file you can add more and more to it to the point you've got all of the eight step, steps working if not you'll find out it's difficult to understand what's gone wrong now let's jump onto the Google Home app and let's get it all exposed there. So in your Google Home app, press the plus sign, set up a device and tap have something already set up. Now you'll need to search for Home Assistant by Nabucasa. At this stage, you need to log in with your Nabucasa details allow access to the home assist to home assistant now the home assistant is linked you're able to assign um, entities and uh, objects into rooms so after you set up home assistant within the google home app and you still can't find your script i'll show you where they are tap on your initial go to assistant settings scroll down to home control and now go to scenes and there you have it you have your play dead by daylight and also have my sonos tts script my two scripts are exposed now you can also control which scripts you expose that's something a bit more advanced which you'll find in my blog now i've set up a routine in order to trigger that scene and i'll show you how i've done it click on routines scroll down Now the trigger word in my example is play dead by daylight or play DBD, which is the abbreviation. And the assistant will activate play dead by daylight. So in this way, it's sort of a bit more user friendly. And if you save this, you'll be ready to go. A few things you can do with this card before I show you how to set it up. This is how you, you can use it. If you can click, you click on it, you can turn off and turn on PlayStation. This will put it in rest mode just to let you know. You can switch the source. So you can pick, let's say I want to pick Twitch and you just do that, just like that. And then PlayStation will go out of the uh, current app and it will boot up uh, Twitch. Uh, and, and that might take time depending on how so uh, PlayStation 4 is, but you know, it, it's got there now as you can see, so it's switched. Uh, is sw dynamic switches the wall art um, these four buttons have been all configured and these all four buttons work thanks to the Harmony hub integration so I have a Logitech Harmony hub that you can set up quite easily and once you've set it up you can then um, configure these buttons to simulate the press of the PS button you know on all of the other buttons so I you simply press this and then that will send the uh, exact command back to PlayStation so how to set it up so first thing you need to do you need two things from the home assistant community store now if you don't know what that is I've, I'll link uh, put a video somewhere here and you can go and get that installed but sort of quite you have to get it installed uh, this sort of custom repository so go to hacks go to front end and here you can look for a few things. The first thing you need to look for is the mini media player and get that installed. I've used that already in several videos, but it's sort of the de facto uh, media player. And then look for uh, the custom button, the button card, and, and add that into, once those have been, been configured, then you're gonna just have to check one thing before we go ahead. Go to configurations, go to Lovelace dashboards, go to resources, 
and check that you have this JavaScript URL in there. Have a look at what you've got in here. This is what you need. Now, if you've installed it through Hacks, you'll have this. I believe if you install it uh, manually, uh, it will be uh, slash local. So just give that a go. If you get stuck, this might be the reason why you're stuck. So let's go back to the dashboard now. And let's edit this and let's see how this works. The first thing I'll do, I'll switch off the PlayStation. This is Amanda. Um, we'll put it back in rest mode. So save some energy. Let's go to configure UI. Edit. So I'm using a conditional card configuration. So this will appear and disappear based on if the PlayStation 4 is on. And I'll show you the condition, which is right at the bottom here. So this condition here at the bottom, I've created a uh, switch in my uh, YAML file. And that switch looks at the configuration and determines that if the Harmony Hub is on or off, then this will be like a Boolean and will determine that. So let's have a look at this code. So this code you'll find is in the blog and I really um, would recommend you just copy and paste it and then just readjust it as, as you need. But I'll talk you through what it does at a high level. It uses the custom media, media player on our top part. So this is this part here and it's hiding a lot of the uh, a lot of things uh, icon power progress source and volume that's up to you you can change this if you want and want to that's no problem and then each of these sections which start with color defines each of these buttons underneath here these five buttons and the things that you will need to change are, are, are the following the entity ID You'll need to change this. This will be the entity ID of your re remote or your Harmony Hub. In my case, remote dot living room. The command PS that's going to stay the same, and the device will be different. And the device you'll find it in your Harmony configuration file, which will go and get there in a minute. And that's it, really. So you set these up, and and these are the things you need to change. So you feel free to. Uh, control F and Control V and just replace them all, do a Control uh, replace and, and this should work. So save it and, and you'll have this here. Now you've noticed that Banish uh, got shorter, that's because of the condition. Because PlayStation 4 is off, then it sort of doesn't display anymore. So it sort of it does this little dynamic trick, which is, which is quite nice. So let's have a look at that, how many configuration, like I mentioned. Let's go to file editor. So let's go to the harmony.com file. So in here, this will depend on whatever you have. But I have basically free activity set up. Watch Apple TV, play PlayStation 4, watch TV. So these free activities are defined above here. Then if you scroll down in this file, you keep going until you find your uh, own device in our example playstation 4 here you've got the list of the um, commands you can send so direction down left right up you know you can see the list this will be the id that you'll need for the lovelace dashboard card as you can see here that is the same id as one over here so if you enjoyed this video and you're into media and have a look at my other two videos a google mini setup and a video where I do a deep dive in Sonos. If you've got Sonos, you enjoy that a lot. If not, you can subscribe. There's plenty more content coming. Like and comment down below. Stay safe.